very essential knowledge has been lost in the 20th century. It's fascinating how it happens, really. And I didn't really learn it myself until I assisted at maybe you know, 40, 40 some births. But I actually saw a woman, a very good friend of mine, um, go backwards in labor, very quietly went backwards. She was almost to the point, and this was her first baby, of opening enough to start pushing. And all that time she'd been, you know, um, enjoying herself. She and her husband were good friends. We're sort of laughing and joking in between, you know, um, contractions, rushes, I'd rather call them, but yeah, whatever. And so then she became really quiet, very serious, and I started to wonder, where's this labor going? Because it was all kind of calming down. And I asked her if she'd mind if I rechecked, and I found out instead of being open this much, she was now back to here. I, thought, I didn't know that was possible. I'd never read about it, never observed it. And so I just thought, hmm, well, I know you're, there's nothing wrong with your, your cervix, your uterus. It's performing very nicely. Your mood, however, has changed. So let's just change it back to what you were before. So I suggest she regain her sense of humor, laugh at my silly jokes. And, and you know what happened when she did? She reopened. And I thought, that's really good. <laughs> So then I went looking for it in the books because I think, you know, if you have something that's a biological phenomenon, um, you should be able to read about it, but it wasn't there. And I became fascinated by that because it wasn't in the obstetrics text, it wasn't in the nursing text, and yet experienced nurses reported, you know, experiencing this happen. And I said, well, don't you ever tell the doctors about it? And they said, well, they always say we're wrong. And I thought, well, you're the one that do all the che you're the ones that do all the checking. So it appears that because your salary isn't as high as theirs, they're saying you're wrong, when you are really the more experienced person. So it was only when I went into the 19th century books, when the doctors themselves were doing home births, that I that I found it, and it was in almost every textbook at that time. So I thought that's that's something that is a product of when people were in their homes and it was all on a more you know person to person basis doctors older doctors would tell the younger doctor who would always be male if you want the labor to go well don't go in her room till the women let you in because you'll stop the labor and in some cases the woman was on the point of the baby's head being born the doctor shows up instead of the midwife and that was the last pain she had for 2 weeks or in one case, 19 days. And I thought, wow, this is big. And I thought, how do we explain this? And I thought, well, I think I'm gonna call it sphincter law because in women's um, cervix works much as, as the sphincters that we all know and experience. And we know quite well that you can't order them to open. And they don't open as well when we have a, a bunch of potentially hospitals hostile people threatening us with sharp instruments and you know we just can't will they're, they're shy they're shy <laughs> so that's just one example but there's another one that's really fascinating me recently because we had a report in 19 uh, no sorry 2007 of a woman in North Carolina who it was only discovered that she wasn't pregnant at c-section how did that happen? A combination of things. Um, most U.S. medical schools, it appears, have quit teaching their junior doctors to put their hands on women and to feel the abdomen for the, the growing uterus, which is quite palpable. Uh, but they go, we have these visual technologies, and they're such fun. I mean, ultrasound is such fun. And uh, But you, it's only as good as the person reading it, and if you can mistake some um, impacted poo for a pregnancy. I mean, you're not very good at what you're doing, but it seems it's pretty easy to make that mistake. And then later on, via another ultrasound, uh, to not, of course, detect a heartbeat. <laughs> poo doesn't have a heart. <laughs> and, uh, and so you've got a woman who wants to be pregnant. Her body can mimic the signs of pregnancy, and this, this phenomenon exists in other mammals. It doesn't mean we're crazy when we experience it, but it is called a false pregnancy, a spurious pregnancy, or pseudosiasis, and it's no longer in U.S. 
obstetrics textbooks. It was edited out apparently as not very important knowledge uh, in the 90s, but it was in every textbook before that. And I'm just appalled that now women in, in my country are in danger of having a C-section when they're not even pregnant because of ignorance.